you will learn how to work with graphic symbols and add lip syncing to your character. Hi! And I'm really, I mean really enthusiastic about working with Adobe Animate. In order to animate your drawings in Animate CC, you will have to convert your art into symbols. In this tutorial, we will discuss working with graphic symbols because there are lots of cool things you can do with them. Let's take a look at this scene. This scene contains a background, the classroom, a body, the head, several different mouth expressions for later use, and a layer where we will drop the audio in. The head layer has got several groups, from where the head is built up from. If you want the character to blink with his eyes every now and then, we would need a graphic symbol. I always like to think of an intelligent group when I'm explaining graphic symbols. It's kind of a group, but it contains its own timeline within this so-called symbol. An easy way to select everything within a layer is to select the keyframe in that particular layer. When all is selected, convert it to a symbol with a right mouse click on the selection. Choose Convert to Symbol. Give it a name which makes sense in the pop-up panel and select Graphic from the drop-down list. Hit OK. Double click on the head to open the Just Made Symbol. Please note the structure in the top of the interface. This area shows you that you find yourself in a particular symbol. It's easy to go back to the higher level with a single click on scene 1, or double click outside of the drawing of the head. Open the symbols again with a double click and notice that this symbol has got its own timeline. Select all the objects on the stage. Right click and choose Distribute to Layers. Name every layer correctly to keep things organized. Delete every layer that appears to be empty. Make a selection at 2 seconds to create a new frame. In both of the eye layers, you will create a keyframe at frame 55. Delete its content. In both layers you can draw a line to give the head a closed eyelid. Now play the animation with the looping option enabled to see the blinking in action. Go back to scene 1 with a double click somewhere on the stage, and so you are back in the original timeline. The beauty of a graphic symbol is that by default the blinking of the eyes will loop. There are also other options available in the properties of a graphic symbol. Where we are discussing graphic symbols and lip syncing. In video 1 you've been working on these eyes and already learned a lot about graphic symbols. The character's eyes should be blinking like this in the original scene 1 timeline. But there's a lot more that you can do with graphic symbols. You will learn how to show frames from the other timeline onto the main timeline in this tutorial. Let's make him smile at frame number 10. In the second layer, the mouth layer, you will see there is a collection of mouths on the right hand side of the stage. These were already converted to one graphic symbol. Open the symbol with a double click. For lip syncing, we need to make use of a variety of mouth expressions, and I have added a little legenda to explain which mouth is which expression. I want to create a little animation for it by placing all the mouths in one same location. I will do that by selecting them all with the selection tool. Use the align panel, which you can open from window, align, to center them horizontally and vertically. Then drag the mouse to the left and place the selection where the mouth should be on the character. Select Distribute by keyframe to drop every mouth in a separate keyframe. You can do this with a right click. Please note that it will drop every mouth in a new keyframe, which will end up with an empty first keyframe. Select the empty keyframe with a right click to delete that particular empty keyframe. 
If you play the animation you will see that the character talks with quite some speed. Double click outside the character to go to the main scene 1 timeline. In here the character will talk rapidly as well and it's looping the animation. And that's rather cool, but this is not what I intend to achieve. Select the mouth and take a look at the properties. Turn off the loop option by selecting single frame and select frame number 14 as first frame. Now the character will stay silent through the length of the whole animation. I want to make him smile at frame number 10. So go to frame number 10 and create a keyframe with the insert keyframe button. Select the mouth on the stage and open the use frame picker option in the properties on the right hand side of the screen. From this panel I will choose frame number 13 to make him smile. It's a good idea to turn on the pin current symbol option. This option will keep the symbol active in the frame picker panel. When you're working with more graphic symbols in combination with the frame picker, then it's helpful to launch a new frame picker panel with this button on the right top corner of this panel. This frame picker is a really great feature to use in your animations. And now I think we are ready for the lip syncing feature. Let's start working with audio and lip syncing. We will add audio and lip syncing to the file we've been working on in the previous two tutorials. Let's import the audio file. Because you won't see the audio on the stage, I'm importing it directly into the library. This gives me control on which layer and in which keyframe the audio will be placed. When we take a look at the library panel, we will see the audio file. I want the character to start talking in frame 15. So we need to have a keyframe at that moment in time in the audio layer. Create a keyframe with the insert keyframe button. With this keyframe selected we can drag the audio file from the library onto the stage. The waveform in the layer panel shows us that the audio file was placed correctly. It's always a good idea to have a separate layer for the audio to keep things clean. Now play the animation from frame 1 and listen to the audio. Hi, my name is Matt and I'm really, I mean really, this sounds amazing, it's starting to come together. But what happens when we stop the animation at frame 30 and hit play again? Then we hear the sound of silence. And that's not something we can work with at all. We want to have full control of the audio at all times in this animation. Select the audio in the audio layer again to get the properties. You will see the audio sync option. At this moment the audio waits for an event to start playing. And this event can be a click action or the moment in time where we play the animation and it passes this particular keyframe. And that's the situation right now. But if you want to hear the audio every single time, no matter where we are in the timeline, then we need the option stream. Let's check if that works. Hi, my name is Matt. And I'm really, I mean really, oh, and yes it does. Only it's not long enough. Create frames for all layers until frame number 235. That's where the text comes to an end in this case. Now let us start the lip syncing process. Create a keyframe in frame 15 in the mouse layer. Open the graphic symbol on the stage with a double click. To keep things organized it's best to name the keyframes. It's best to label each mouth position so we can easily work with it with all the positions in the lip syncing process later on. It's also a good idea to use frame labels when you're using the frame picker. The first mouth position is surprised. Select the first keyframe in the layer named labels. Go to the properties for that particular keyframe. And in the label area you are able to give it a name. Type surprised. In this case I don't see the agenda anymore and I think it's very useful so I'm gonna make a frame in frame number 14 to keep the agenda visible. In frame number 2 we will need to create a keyframe and label it with a, uh, number 3 with woo, and I think you get the idea. Make sure you name them all correctly. When you're done we don't need the agenda anymore. Please delete that layer. Go back to scene 1 in the main timeline. 
Set the playhead to frame 15 and select the mouth on the stage again. And that way you will get the object properties of the mouse symbol on the right hand side of the screen. Click on the lip syncing button in the properties. Select a neutral mouth and then select the corresponding mouth from the pop-up panel. Do the same for A, D, E, L, M, O, R, S, E, and Woo! Make sure that Adobe Animate uses the correct layer, the layer that contains the audio, in order to let it create keyframes for the different mouth positions. Hit done and let Adobe Animate CC calculate the mouth positions. Now play the animation and see what it does. Hi, my name is Matt and I'm really, I mean really enthusiastic about working with Adobe Animate CC. So this is how you can use graphic symbols, make use of the frame picker and lip syncing and create a beautiful lip syncing animation. Enjoy working with Adobe Animate CC.